Hey guys, welcome back. Yep, this is not clickbait. A new Halo game was announced the other day, and no, sadly, it's not the one game that we were all waiting for. It's an arcade game. But it is canon, and there's actually some really cool stuff in it. So today, we are going to break down the trailer and talk about all of the juicy lore bits inside. And yes, there is definitely Flood involved, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out all of that lovely juicy Flood lore. So, despite it being an arcade game, it actually has a proper story, which is pretty cool. It's set during Halo Combat Evolved, so now we actually get to see the rest of the war on Alpha Halo from a different perspective for the first time since, like, 2003 with the Flood, the novel. And on top of this, the game actually takes some inspiration from the novel too, which is really fucking cool. The Flood is one of my favourite Halo books of all time, and in my opinion, it's the most underrated Halo book. So if you want to take a listen to it, then audibletrial.com slash hiddenxperia, and you can get it for totally free. During the game, you play as an elite group of four ODSTs who jump feet first out of the Pillar of Autumn, roughly around the same time that Chief jumps out the Pillar of Autumn, and down towards Insulation 04. The four ODSTs that you play as are Ethan Graves, a tactical commander, Marcus Hudson, a recon communications expert, Victor Ramos, a heavy weapons support ODST, and Ava Lang, the explosives and demolition trooper, who just happens to be from Chicago, which, I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool, considering the Halo universe is so big and there's so many planets, one of the ODSTs is from Chicago, which, I don't know, it's kind of cool. There's also another ODST uh, seen briefing the squad with an AI, who we're going to get to in a second at the start of the trailer. Now, chances are that ODST is Antonio Silva, the leader of all of the ODSTs on the Pillar of Autumn during the Battle of Alpha Halo, and also the ODST responsible for capturing and interrogating the partially flood-infected Private Jenkins, and also the ODST that destroyed the flood-infected Truth and Reconciliation. Seriously, you guys should really check out The Flood, it's a, uh, it's a really damn good book. And I mean, while we're at it, let's talk about this AI. So, the AI that we see, the very posh, suave British AI, is called Wellesley, and he's another character from Halo The Flood as well. Chances are, he was the other AI alongside Cortana who helped to manage the Pillar of Autumn, and he also helped the ODSTs set up Alpha Base on the Halo, which is something we're going to get to in a minute. He's a really cool AI, and honestly, We've not known what this guy looks like for like 15 years now, 15 years, and we finally do, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, what's actually in the trailer then? Well, it looks like the story actually starts before you drop from the Pillar of Autumn. There's a few shots of you fighting on board the ship, and you're fighting in those all too familiar hallways and cryotube-esque rooms. But there's also a section where it looks like you get to sort of operate the Pillar of Autumn's weapon system. Now, in Halo the Flood, Wellesley defends Alpha Base by controlling its anti-air defences, and we know that the Pillar of Autumn managed to take down four Covenant ships and heavily damage the Truth and Reconciliation on its way down to the Ring, so maybe Wellesley managed to control the Autumn's defences and shoot down the ships and that we get to play that section? That'd be pretty cool. After the ODSTs crashed on the Halo Ring, they established Alpha Base, which was a few kilometres away from where the Pillar of Autumn crashed, a base of operations built from supplies scavenged from the Autumn, built among a load of foreigner structures and above a network of caverns and caves. Now, Wellesley briefed the ODSTs before they went on missions here, and later the base was attacked by a very large Covenant force who were looking for Chief, and also by the Flood who tried to get into the base via the caverns below, but failed. By the time they managed to actually get in, the UNSC had fled the base. But here is the thing we've all been waiting for, the piece de la resistance. The Flood, and it's actually the Flood. I mean, there isn't much to see, sadly. We get to see a group of carrier forms being killed in a valley that pretty much looks identical to Two Betrayals. We get to see some combat forms being gunned down on what looks like Forge World, which actually makes sense because Forge World was set on Alpha Halo. And we also see some tank pure forms fighting on Forge World. Now, I'd imagine that the lore informed watching just recoiled at that because that doesn't make any fucking sense. There should not have been tank forms on Alpha Halo during Combat Evolved. That's because pure forms like the tank require a full grave mind, like the one in Halo 2 and Halo 3, to even exist. They literally can't be created without one. 
The problem here is that the flood outbreak on Alpha Halo only managed to make it to a proto grave mind, the evolution phase which is just before the grave mind, and therefore these tanks shouldn't exist. However, this isn't a retcon, it's not a changing of existing lore again, this actually does make sense. So each Halo ring has a number of flood research facilities, as we all know by now, which were where the foreigners used to store and test samples of flood. The map Cold Storage from Halo 3 was an example of these facilities, and what was on Cold Storage? A tank in a tank. It's highly likely that research facilities on Alpha Halo also had tank forms stored for research, and that when the Covenant let the flood out by accident, they just happened to let tank forms out of storage too, therefore allowing them to exist without a grave mind. And it, it does make sense. Ah, <sighs> and breathe. There's been too many flood retcons recently. This, this almost triggered me, but I'm happy that it didn't. I'm very happy that this didn't trigger me. But yeah, we get to fight the flood in an arcade game, which in my opinion is pretty fucking cool. Oh, also. Doesn't this scene here look so much like that really popular Combat Evolved custom map where you have to defend Echo 419's crashed pelican from like wave after wave of flood outside of the Pillar of Autumn? I swear to god it's inspired by it. I've got some footage on the screen right now of the map that I'm on about. It's got like four or five really popular videos on YouTube of it. It's a cool map and honestly if this is inspired by that custom map then that's actually a pretty fucking cool idea. As well as some of the missions being set on Forge World, there's also one that looks like it's set on the map Ridgeline from Halo Reach, mostly because of that foreigner bridge thing in the top right there. There's also a Falcon, which honestly we never knew was on the Pillar of Autumn, but apparently the Pillar of Autumn had Falcons stored on it. I mean, it came from Reach. Kind of makes sense, I guess. Also, aside from the Hunters and the Warthog, Everything kind of looks like it's from the iconic classic art style. Now for those who have joined the channel recently, the term iconic actually came from an art style thing, so this is very relevant. Very, very relevant. Watch your mouth, son. This stuff is your history. It should remind you, Grunts, what we're fighting to protect. We've got Halo 2 Anniversary Elites, Marines, Weapons, Scorpions, etc. And then the environments are pretty much all from Combat Evolved Anniversary, which does make sense because half the game's maps and missions are likely just ripped from CE and sort of like modified slightly for an arcade game. It's a shame though because honestly I'm not a huge fan of Combat Evolved Anniversary's art style. It just looks really cluttered and messy to me. I prefer OG Combat Evolved but either way it's small beans compared to the new art style versus the old art style. I'm not gonna complain. I'm really not gonna complain. I guess we can officially call this game iconic. Okay, so honestly, I think that's about it. This trailer was only like a minute long, so there's not too much to talk about. The machine is coming to Dave & Buster's this summer, which as a Brit, I don't understand at all, but I'm sure most American people watching this know what Dave & Buster's is. I assume it's like an arcade thing or something. In regards to us Brits and everybody else across the Atlantic, will we get to play this game? By the looks of it, yes, at some point in the future. 343 said that they're working on getting it overseas after it releases in America, but I guess time will tell. I really want to try this out at the very least just to see what it's like, but yeah, we'll have to see if it actually comes over. Alrighty then, I want to give a big thank you to Ardent, Tomahawk, Taylor, Evan, Locust, Bruin, Momo, Shikata, Richie, Tymon, Foxy, and also Jack Madden, Stefan Kersik, Eric Brown, and Sam Grafton for the continued love and support over there on Patreon, along with everybody else who supports me and everything. I really appreciate it. I have my first of three final exams this week, so I might be a little bit AFK for a little bit, so sorry about that. Send me your energy, boys. Send me your energy, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.